After 14 rounds of play over two full days here in Hartford, we are finally making our cut to the top eight. And we have our first top eight match to bring you today. It's going to be myself, Cora, but I am joined by Pablo Meza, who's going to be guest commentating for this quarterfinal. Pablo, how has this Connecticut experience been for you? Um, it's been really good. Um, amazing tournament, really good turnout with almost 800 people. Yeah, it's and huge. Yeah, a lot of fierce competition, and you can see that with the, the quality of players that we have here at the top eight. It is an excellent top eight, but our match for you is going to be Sam Chen taking on Ryan Sablehouse. Sam Chen, uh, recently been on a very hot streak uh finished top eight at worlds finished i believe second at fort wayne uh regional just yep. recently yep. and now he is in his third consecutive top eight finish so uh, i'm sure he's going to be going for that win but still incredibly impressive and then ryan sablehouse just one of the best players in the game uh doing incredibly well with this volcanian list that we've seen uh, both him and himself and igor costa pilot yeah. now to the top eight uh along with them we have uh, Patrick Van Story, yep. who is playing uh, Ho'o Salazel. Mm -hmm. So I believe that is the only one of that list that we made into the top eight. Uh, Rukan Shao with the Tapu Bulu Vikavolt list. Uh, then we have Peter Kika on Galisopod and Garbador. Uh, Ian Robb on Drampagarb. Igor Costa, of course, on that same Volcanian, Volcanian list. Yep. And uh, Michael Long, who is playing Greninja. So actually some really nice diversity here in the top eight. What do you think of uh, the lineups that these guys brought? Um, well, Ryan and Igor are teammates, um, mm -hmm. so it's no surprise that they both made it, and their list has, is pretty good. I myself yeah. played against uh, Jimmy Pendarvis, who's also part of their mm -hmm. group, and I definitely, like, usually Gardevoir is one of the, it's usually favored against Volcanion, yeah. but their list was is really well structured to target Gardevoir, and so I think Sam's gonna be struggling a little bit because of the text that Ryan included in his in his deck. Yeah, uh, namely the four copies of Fighting Fury belts and the two enhanced hammers, trying to make that matchup just a little bit better for Ryan and the other Volcanian players. But uh, Sam knows this matchup. I am sure he is still. I would say it's about even even with the additional anti guardy techs for Volcanian. But uh, when this has come up on stream, we've actually seen Volcanian do very, very well. So we'll have to see uh, exactly if San can get off to a very fast start or if Ryan is going to have the typical baby Volcanian into large EXs on the bench, uh, power up as much energy as you can very quickly. So right here, we, we have the game on screen, and Ryan immediately has a not-so-great start with the Tapu Lele in the active spot, so not this ideal baby volcano yeah. that we were talking about. And looks like Sam won the flip, so he's using Bridget, he's checking his price cards to make sure that he doesn't make any plays based on cards that he might not have access mm -hmm. to. And then we haven't seen his hand yet, but I'm sure we'll see an energy evolution, we'll see a Bridget and all the standard Gardevoir stuff that allows you to set up. Mm -hmm. It does look like that is uh, what's going to happen. Still looks like he's searching with Wonder Tag, trying to find what exactly he wants to play. We got a quick glimpse of his hand, but I, I don't think I saw yeah. a fairy energy there, which means he may not have access to the Sylvia on this turn. Uh, but you're absolutely right. Ryan's start is a little bit weaker. When you've only got yeah. uh, that Lele in your opening hand, it is not what you would typically expect, but he'll likely have a draw supporter, um, something that can get him access to his fire Pokemon. Yep, and now we see Sam did not prize the Bridget, so that's really, really <laughs> that's good for him. That's a win right off the bat. Yeah, so fun fact, I am I was using the same list as Sam, except okay. for one card different, and mm -hmm. that was the second Bridget to avoid those scenarios where if you prize Bridget on turn one, you kind of struggle sometimes. Yeah. And now Sam still checking his deck, looking or trying to decide which third Pokemon he he wants to get. And it looks like his Octillery might be Pride. So he does have Rumoraid, but he doesn't have Octillery. And we see him r rushing through his deck one last time. But there's a Rumoraid, but no Octillery. That is unfortunate. The Octillery going to be um, the consistent draw Pokemon on the bench. No Oranguru in this list. So just uh, hoping for Abyssal Hand and to have that consistent draw power with it. He is also running the 2-2 two -two, um, EV Sylveon line, yeah. even though a lot of other players are only running one. Uh, does he really just value the Plea GX? 
Yeah, so Plea GX is, is a very useful GX attack, and it's useful against every matchup, pretty much, whereas Gardevoir GX's attack is only useful against Garbodor, yeah. pretty much. So Shuffle all those items back in, yeah. make Trash Lynch do much exactly. less damage. And then Sylvan also provides you with the consistency of being able to search for any three cards, mm -hmm. and a player such as Sam will always make the right decision with the three cards, so... Um, that consistency and then the potential aggression you get with a turn to 110, mm -hmm. that's what makes Sylvian a really good inclusion into the deck. And that would be a big start for Sam because he does have the Eevee in the active. If he can find that fairy energy, uh, use energy evolution to get the Sylveon and then magical ribbon for those three cards, uh, he can find you know, rare candy, Gardevoir, and start getting uh, his bench Pokemon powered up. Yeah. Now we see Ryan plays an end, plays down a Turtonator with a Fighting Fury Belt, and Turtonator is a preferred attacker in this matchup just because you get to discard energy when you attack, and therefore Gardevoir requires a huge amount of energy mm -hmm. to get a one-hit KO. And <clears throat> we, see a Ryan, we see Ryan get a hit a max elixir, which is always good, and he might even get a knockout here with the right combination of cards. He could potentially get a knockout on the Eevee, which would also... Um, not only would Sam not have access to Octillery this game, but he would also struggle to get an, a Sylveon in the active spot. Yeah, he would have to find uh, that second Eevee, and no telling if it's in his deck or if it's also prize. You are at the mercy of your prize cards, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but they are not as much at the mercy of the clock now, because it is uh, top eight. There will be additional time on the clock, so um, an hour and five minutes remaining. Plenty of time for these guys to actually get through all three games. Yeah, definitely. And now it looks like Ryan didn't get the knockout on the EV. And Sam already has a Sylvian in his hand, so he won't even need energy evolution. But he still needs the to find the fairy energy to mm -hmm. be able to, to magical ribbon. So it looks like he played Ultra Ball. Yep. And uh, what is he looking for here? Yep, that Tapu Lele Wonder Tag for the Sycamore. Now, interesting that Sam discarded the Acerola. So that's a really good card against Volcanion because anytime Volcanion doesn't get a one hit KO on mm -hmm. Gardevoir and you're able to heal, that's essentially a lost a lost turn for them. So losing that Azer Olak could come into play in the later stages of the game where Sam might want to heal and Ryan is running low on energy cards. So could be pretty crucial. It doesn't seem crucial right now, but it could, it could be, be crucial. In the long run. And yeah, exactly. That is, I've actually really noticed that over the course of the weekend. Most lists, if they're playing Acerola, are only playing one. Yeah. Um, and in the early stages, you feel like you may, you don't know if you're going to need it or yeah. not. Um, but you know in the immediate, you know, I need Lele, I need Wonder Tag, I need to draw. So this is, uh, it seems like a resource that, you know, is not useful to me right now. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. But you're not playing Versus Seeker in this format yeah. because it's not legal. So you have a much more difficult uh, time of actually making use of that single copy of Acerola. So now Sam won't have access to it uh, maybe when he needs it and still suffering from a lack of energy here. But I, I have also noticed, like you said, it's very difficult for Volcanion to get those one hit kills. Yeah. Um, it seems like you need three Volcanion triple steam up choice band in some cases because Gardevoir does have uh, that 230 health. Yeah. And now we see that Ryan chose to start his turn while Sam is uh, selecting his card for his cards for magical ribbon mm -hmm. so there could be actions that Ryan does that um, would change that Sam's would change mind Sam's decision yeah and now I did see Sam was picking out rare candy and Galate so he knows he has to prioritize access to Galate because he doesn't have artillery so he needs at least to rearrange his top deck in a manner where he will get the uh, the benefit of the top deck yes because he has no artillery he needs to ensure he gets uh, the consistent draw supporters off the top because he doesn't have reliable draw for more than one card every turn. Yeah. And now, well, I guess uh, Ryan's top to let um, <laughs> Sam yeah, finish up the... Yeah, just drew You don't want to give Sam more information about what you're going to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, nothing going on here that is out of the ordinary. So Lele going to retreat, Turtonator going to the active. And yeah, so Ryan chose to use uh, Steam Up. He attached to Turtonator and looks like he will be using Shell Trap. And another important thing here is Turtonator has a Fighting Fury Belt once again, giving it that extra HP. And Sam already discarded one Field Blower, but he only discarded one Fighting Fury Belt. And you really want to hit two because Fighting Fury Belt makes you commit so many energy onto Gardevoir. And without Artillery, Sam will have trouble digging into his deck to get those energy. 
And he's only playing uh, two copies of the field blower, so one left. I also want to touch on uh, Parallel City. We saw in a Guardi versus Volcanion earlier today that Parallel City really got the better of uh, its Volcanion opponent, yeah. um, so much so that with three Pokemon on the bench, they tried to play a Tapu Lele. Um, both players shuffled. Things got confusing. Ooh. The player ended up scooping because, uh, you know, he was not going to win anyway, and that yeah. was uh, not a legal play right there. But is Parallel City normally effective in this matchup? Yeah, so both sides of Parallel City really hurt uh, Volcanion. Either they, you limit their bench and they might have to discard Volcanion EXs so they cannot steam up anymore. And the damage reduction also really affects the math they try mm -hmm. to hit um, in order to get one shots against different Pokemon. So the one Parallel City could be really important for Sam at a, at a crucial turn later on. Now uh, we see Sam uh, double rare candy into Gardevoir and Kalate, so a really strong turn for him. Very powerful. Now, he did choose those cards with uh, Magical, Magical Ribbon, yeah, so he set it up. it's as expected. Now, I but don't think Sam will be afraid to attack into the Shell Trap damage, mm -hmm. just because he expects the Sylveon to get knocked out anyways, but I guess I'm wrong because he decides to attach to the, <laughs> to the Guard instead. Uh, he could... Just Magical Ribbon again this turn and find yeah. three, but he's going to end first. I guess he's prioritizing um, setting up and getting more energy on Gardevoir over, aggress or over aggressive play just because he doesn't have that artillery to back him up and get him that backup Gardevoir or backup energy for his Gallade yeah. in order to finish off the, the Turdinator. How many Gardevoir do you usually want set up at the same time? Like, what do you feel really comfortable with? Uh, definitely two, because um, you can expect a really good player such as Ryan to always have a backup attacker to knock out and replace his, his active Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you don't immediately have a response, you lose a lot of tempo in that, in that regard. And... What we see right now is that another rare candy by by Sam, so that was pretty quite good draws. An N. Yeah, pretty good draws for him. Uh, yeah. He's able to attach to the Gardevoir again. Yeah, thanks to its ability, and now he's gonna magical ribbon once again. So probably going to try to prioritize knocking out the Turdinator. Um, so I would guess he would grab the field blower, um, perhaps extra energy, perhaps mm -hmm. a DCE. Um, I saw he grabbed two Fairy and a Sycamore. He he's, has a DCE He's got a DCE hand. already. So maybe he even already has a Field Blower, not sure. Yeah, I saw him pick a Choice Band, but it's a bit hard to see from our angle. Looks like he's going to go with the Sycamore as well. Uh, did not catch that third card. Okay, but so we'll see soon enough. Yeah, so Ryan's issue right now is if he loses a Turdinator, yeah, sure, he takes a knockout on the Sylvan right now. But Sylvan is always expendable in yeah. this matchup. And right You've already found six cards from your deck yeah. <laughs> with the Sylveon. It's soaking up some attacks. It, it's doing its job. Yeah, and Ryan hasn't been able to end any of those away, so that's really hurting Ryan, and he has no energy in play beyond what he has on Turdinator, so if that goes down... Oh, there we go. There he has the end. Okay. So the cards drawn from Magical Ribbon will go back <coughs> into the deck. It's a bit of a disruption for Sam. But he still has a beautiful setup here with backup attackers, even if the first Gardevoir gets knocked out. But the big priority is going to be, how does he get rid of this Turtonator? It's up to 230 uh, HP with that Fighting Fury Belt. It can attack for 170. And then on top of that, discards to Fire Energy, so Gardevoir's attacks are not as effective against it. Yeah, now we, I, I believe Sam got the Field Blower, so that's really big. Um, he also got an energy and a choice band, so that should be enough, I believe. Uh, it should be one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that, no, he might be thirty. He might be ten three, short. Three, four, five, six with the DCE and the fairy. Yeah, he's actually uh, well. He's got to find short. that DCE still. He's ten short. He doesn't have any drawn that. Oh, oh but he what a draw! That more. is beautiful, and he gets the fourth routes set up on the bench as well. Yeah, so no artillery, not hurting Sam, and he top decks the Sycamore. He will be able to premonition and make sure that there are energy on the top of his deck. And, yep, plenty of energy for him to, to get the knockout, and Ryan doesn't have any response, so that card of work could carry Sam the whole game, even without artillery. I mean, Ryan got a <coughs> slower start this game where he started Lele instead of Baby Volcanion, wasn't able to set up multiple attackers at the same time and kind of just had to go in on this Turtonator. 
So two, three, four, five energy. Choice band is an additional three. Oh, there's the field blower. Yep, yeah, that's exactly and what he was looking for. And the sycamore for a fresh hand. Yep, Sam turned around the Gardevoir a little bit to indicate that he used uh, its ability so that both players know it's been used. And now uh, we see Sam has the extra energy to get the knockout. We see another ability. That's why uh, Gardevoir mm -hmm. gets turned around. And then we see the energy attachment for turn, and that's enough, more than enough, to Oof. knock out the Turtonator. So Sam in the lead. And Ryan has no field, no presence. What a powerful Pokemon. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Such a, an incredible addition from Burning Shadows to this standard meta. Yeah. Just so powerful, such a high health. It is only one of the uh, two stage two decks in the game. It does take longer to set up. But once you get going and if you have that backup attacker available... It's very difficult for Volcanion to stop this. You need a lot of energy. Yeah, for sure. It's like it's a trade-off you you get when using Gardevoir. It's like you're more frail in the early game, but once you get a Gardevoir going, your your presence mm -hmm. on the field is very very strong. And Volcanion is quite different. Like it's super aggressive early on, but if you don't get that explosive start, then you kind yeah, of they're struggle. very fragile. Yeah. Now Ren does have a chance to to make a comeback. Sam did commit a lot of energy. To the Gardevoir, so if Ryan is able to find a Bay Volcanion here, he already used triple steam up. So if he finds a way to retreat and attack with Bay Volcanion, he will be get back energy on board and he will deal a ton of damage to, to the Gardevoir. Uh, we do see the end, which with no artillery will definitely hurt Sam. Um, he does have premonition from a glade, but that's that. You can only use it after he's drawn that first time, so he may. Yeah. Whiff here. He finds the Guzma Fairy Energy in the Parallel City in hand now for Sam. Yeah. And an Eevee. So, Rand's list, I believe, only plays one um, one Field Blower. Yeah, so getting rid of that Parallel City will be really difficult for him. And I would imagine Sam would choose to reduce his bench and reduce Ryan's damage output. And there, yeah, we see the yep. scoop from Ryan. Um, Sam's presence with the Gardevoir is too strong, and Ryan has no response and yeah um <laughs> i'm really surprised by by that match but i mean brian never even found an ultra ball i think to to get a baby volcanian so no he suffered from a very poor draw uh the lele in the active is the only starter he did end up with a couple volcanian on the bench but never had enough energy to get it going and this list does not run Kiawe like the Ho-Oh Salazza lists. No. Um, so even if you don't start energy in those decks, you have that uh, couple copies of Kiawe to front load a lot of energy onto an attacker just to ensure that you have some action going on. Uh, with Ryan, if he doesn't get the discards on the fire energies and the baby Volcanion to then power heater and uh, put the energy on the bench, it's really slow, actually. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, Ryan does have more basic Pokemon that are not Bay Volcanion than yeah. Bay Volcanion. So, odds are he will start something that's not Bay Volcanion. Mm -hmm. But definitely starting Tabu Lele is the least desired Pokemon. Even Oranguru is, is yeah. decent because then you don't have to search for it later. Mm -hmm. And Ryan does run uh, quite a few switching cards in Switch and Floatstones. However, starting Tabu Lele negates access to one supporter you could have had later mm -hmm. on really rough on ryan yeah and he's only only running two copies of yeah. tapu lele gx actually that yeah that really hurts starting the first one then you only have access to one uh if, as draw support um if you prize one it's that much worse for you because most most decks i'd say are running three some even go so far as to run four yeah. uh but just having that two copies means he has extra room for lily in the deck, uh, which I think we saw Igor start on turn one with Lily every single game he yeah. played. <laughs> so powerful on that turn one can draw you to eight, but in exchange, you you forego those top deck uh, Tapu Leles in the late game to get you draws after you've been end. Yeah. And now we see Oranguru, <laughs> as we were speaking of it. And yeah, I mean, Ryan has plenty of time to make a comeback if he's going to be able to to do it um 15 minutes over 50 minutes should mm -hmm. be more than enough time to complete two more games because these decks take one shots so you take both take prizes really really quickly yeah there's no spread there's no chip damage with yeah. these pokemon it, it's all back and forth back and forth knockouts yeah and i mean i guess you deciding who to target with Guzma that's probably 
um, one of the hardest choices when using each deck, but mm -hmm. um, it's not like when you're using a deck like the CDY stuff where you have to place only 20 damage and every 20 damage yeah. matters. So this is a lot more straightforward. Now we see an Ultra Bolt discarding the Field Blower. So if Sam has deduced or if he knows that Ryan only plays one Field Blower, then if Sam finds a Prowl CD, it's going to stick and Ryan will have no say on and no response to that. Mm -hmm. So later on in the game, that could be really important. Especially th reducing the damage because that makes Ryan have to commit a lot of energy to getting knockouts. Yeah, and if he uh, it limits how many Volcanion can be on the bench to access Steam Up, and if you want to have that Volcanion damage through Steam Up, then you need you know two or three on your bench, then you don't have room for Arandru, you don't have room for Tapu Lele to play. It really hurts this deck. Yeah. Now, Ryan does have a strong turn one. Um, we do see the Lily right there. He finds the switch, however, he really doesn't want to charge Volcanion with his Max Elixirs, I don't think, just because Volcanion takes more energy to get a knockout on on Gardevoir, and it always has three energy, so Gardevoir yeah. gets a knockout a lot easier on him, so his ideal target for the Max Elixir would be Turtonator, but unfortunately Ryan did not find one. Uh, still a very nice turn one for Ryan here. Ends with a pretty full hand as the Oran grew on the bench for draw going forward. But Sam finds that bridge at exactly what he wanted. We saw him get that in the last game as well. He can set up uh, a couple of routes and perhaps an Eevee, or he can uh, get that artillery line started if he hasn't prized it this game. Yeah, so that's what Sam's going to check every time with his first search. He's going to check for the 1-1 one, one artillery pieces. He's going to check for Kalade most likely, um, how many DCEs he has access to, um, how many Ralts, of course, how many Gardevoirs. And yeah, drawing the Bridget naturally is also really good because then you still have access to three Tapu Lele for the later yeah. stages in the game where you might need the Crucial Acerola mm -hmm. or the Crucial Guzma or even an end to try to deny Ryan from having the outs he needs to, to take a knockout or to win the match. Mm -hmm. So It's hard to draw that Bridget naturally. He's only yeah. running the one copy of it. Uh, so to get that is very fortunate for Sam. He's getting uh, another very strong start in this game. A game that, though Ryan has techs, to make it closer, still seems like Sam has a good uh, chance in this one if he is just able to get uh, a pair of those Gardevoir down and start building up the energy, start attacking. It's much easier for him to get the kills on Ryan's Pokemon than it is for Ryan to get the kills on Gardevoir. Yeah, for sure. Now, we do see that Remoraid is priced once again. Oh. Uh, well, it was Octillery yeah, priced Yeah, but last game, having but one piece, it's... Yeah. That's so unfortunate. And Remoraid is more crucial being priced because if you have access to Remoraid and Octillery is under... Oh, never oh, mind. Oh, he's got there it. He's it got it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Whew. No, that was a close one. This is good. <laughs> this is good news for Sam. Yeah. He will have access to Abyssal Hand this game if he can find that Octillery. Uh, he'll have that consistent card draw and won't be at the mercy of the top of his deck uh, if Ryan is playing and when Sam has taken you know, four or five prize cards. Yeah, now Sam did Ultra Ball away... Agusma, I believe. So he doesn't want to rely on that to bring um, Sylvian to the active spot to to Magical Ribbon. He's just going to let the Ralts get knocked out. Um, Ryan already used up the Steam Up and he has a Fighting Fury belt, so he only requires one. And Ryan's going to dig for, for Turgenator because attaching energy to Oranguru also... I mean, it's a good attacker against mm -hmm. Gardevoir, but it's not the attacker you want, for sure. You really want to power up... Um, Turgenator in this early game. And we can see that he's even holding on to a, a Max Elixir because he wants to power up the Turgenator, not, this, not the Pokemon he currently has in play. Now we're going to see another Max Elixir. Um, going full on to Volcanion, or are we... I, I would assume he's going to spread the energy around. Yeah. Oh, no? Or not. Yeah, he's going Trying to all get in that on Volcanion. I guess Volcanic Sam's Heat attack online. Yeah, so he Sam's have field. Any other options. Yeah, Sam's field is not as developed as it was the, the yes. first game. He's only had one turn, so mm -hmm. um, Ryan should feel safe with that Volcanion on the bench for now. If Ryan can get an early knockout onto uh, the routes and start cutting down on the ability of, of basic Pokemon that Sam has access to, then Sam, unlike last game, won't be able to set up uh, double Guardi plus Gallade, for instance. Yeah, yeah. So one Ralts is definitely going down right now, and. Ryan could easily Guzma up another one to get a knockout. Like, 
Sam off of two cards, getting both evolutions going seems very unlikely. Yeah. He's got the DCE in hand and the Sycamore, so he's going to have a fresh hand of seven next turn, and now he will have access to Magical Ribbon as well um, if he wants to use it next turn. But still, a long way to go to get these routes to their final form. Now, Brian did commit an energy to the active um, Volcanian, so I'm guessing he's planning on retreating and knocking out the Sylvian. If he can do that with mm -hmm. an end to deny the Magical Ribbon, that would be huge. But we see Sam drew the parallel CD, so it'll be interesting to see which side he decides to go with, because the damage reduction would probably prevent a knockout on Sylvian, yeah. but the bench reduction as well, because Sable, um, Ryan won't be able to play any more Volcanian EXs to increase his damage output, and there we go. He does limit Ryan's bench. <laughs> I like this. The damage reduction would be very nice, but I think if you get one Magical Ribbon or two Magical Ribbon off, uh, you're not so concerned with the Sylveon. Gardevoir is going to be your main attacker anyway, and you'd rather prevent Ryan from playing Tapu Lele, from getting down a Turtonator and making use of Nitro Tank, at least until you get that first knockout. Yeah, definitely. And now... See a magical ribbon, and in Sam's hand, he has two rare candy already uh, an Ultra Ball and two double colorless. So he has all the energy he needs to get knockouts except the fairy, but he can easily get two Gardevoir going next turn. And I believe we can't see clearly, but I'm pretty sure he's choosing um, or he will choose two Gardevoirs. Yeah, because he's got a couple of rare candies. If Octillery isn't priced, which now I'm not sure because I thought Remoraid was priced. Um, I'm sure he'll either pick a supporter or perhaps a fairy energy to secure the knockout. Ah, uh, there's Octillery. Oh, yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, he's looking at uh, Double Guardy Octillery for the three, perhaps. Yeah, I uh, would imagine no, so. No, looks like he takes something else in that Octillery spot. Yeah, well, he has a little troll in his hand, so he can mm -hmm. uh, search for Octillery easily. Um, I would have loved to see Sam grab a fairy, a Guzma, and Octillery just to secure the knockout on the Volcanian EX because that's the biggest threat right here. Yeah. Um, Baby Bulk is annoying, but without Volcanian EX to power it up, um, it's not, not really as much that of a threat. big a threat. Yeah. It's never going to get a one-hit knockout on anything that Sam has except the Octillery. Yeah, exactly. The Guzmas it up. And there's a threat of even Plea GX here because Ryan has a lot of energy in play but a Plea GX could definitely uh, slow him down quite a few turns. Now, Ryan does find an Enhanced Hammer, which is one of the tech cards he included specifically for this matchup. And, I mean, Sam has two of those energy already in his hand, so that's not going to delay him at all. Uh, but yeah, Sam did pick uh, Fairy Energy instead of the Artillery. Okay. While you're going to get the Guardi online, you can attach the DCE and then Secret Spring for the additional fairy. So I certainly understand wanting to be able to make full use of those abilities this turn when you have the Ultra Ball in hand as well anyway. Yeah. Now we see the double Brick Candy into double Gardevoir for, for Sam. Um, based on Ryan's facial expressions, I'm pretty sure he knows. Um, I don't think he's happy about this. <laughs> yeah, no, he's not <laughs> happy at all. And even Sam top deck the Tapu Lele, which actually gives him the Guzma in order to to get the knockout on the Volcanian EX. Mm -hmm. So, oh, wow, but he's spreading the energy. That's very peculiar. Is he going to Magical Ribbon again? I guess that's mm -hmm. the super safe play. And yeah, he's going to Magical Ribbon once okay. again. He doesn't have all the cards that he wants. Can get three more vulnerable to N, um, but forces Ryan to have it. Yeah. Which uh, looks like he's oof. got three pair of Guzma in <laughs> Yeah, hand. triple Guzma, double Volcanian EX, oh. and a Floatstone. He can't play the Volcanian EX because uh, Parallel City is limiting his bench to three. Yeah. Wow, this is bad. Yeah. Now no, Sam, wow. Yeah, so Sam didn't go for the Guzma play because I didn't notice uh, Volcanian EX had a Fighting Fury Belt, so he actually wouldn't have been able to, to take a knockout. However, yeah, now the Magical Ribbon plays make sense. Um, he's going to go for... For field blower, most likely, um, probably artillery this time around, and I think I believe he has. Yeah, he went for a rare candy as well. Okay. There we see the field blower, rare candy. He has ultra wolf. He has DCE in hand. Yeah. Everything that he could possibly want. And Ryan, what does he get off of the top? Looks like it might be a fire energy. Yeah. So still no draw support, and essentially by using parallel city uh, to limit the bench to three. 
it sort of nullifies Oranguru as well, because you have all of these dead EX Pokemon in hand that you can't make use of. You're never going to be able to draw with Instruct. Yep, and now Ryan does have a chance to take a knockout on the Sylveon, but he actually chooses to go after the Ralt. Um, I'm pretty sure he has a Bloodstone in his hand mm -hmm. in order to retreat. And yeah, I guess getting rid of her Ralts is a little bit more relevant than getting rid of the Sylveon, but he has a he has two Cardivores to deal with and a huge hand, and he's only going to draw one prize here. All right, goes back into uh, Baby Volcanion. More than enough to get the job done. You don't want to limit yourself to uh, not being <coughs> able to use Volcanic Heat next turn or needing another Guzma to be able to use it. So even though I, I don't think he has any other Fire Energy in the discard, this is still perfectly good. Yep. And Steam no. Artillery even now is doing 110. So uh, this Volcanion has some reach. Now, last game we saw Sam top deck a crucial Sycamore when his hand was dead, and yeah. now we, his hand is not dead because he just searched for three cards he knows he needs, but he top deck the Octillery right now. <laughs> so, Sam just oh, on Savage. Fire. That is. I mean, that's just the way it goes sometimes. You're at the mercy of the top of your deck, yeah. even though Sam was by no means. Um, in a bad position here in last game if he hadn't gotten that sycamore off the top it could have ended very differently yeah definitely and now sam in such a strong position that he actually um is able to discard rare candy and gardevoir off of an ultra ball so wow. many people struggle to to get gardevoir going but he, he can afford to throw them into the discard pile yeah an abundance of gardevoir now sam is playing super safe he just grabbed a sorola with lele he's gonna pick up the Sylveon, which is the only damaged Pokemon. Um, he's gonna Field Blower away the Fighting Fury Belt from Volcanion and the Floatstone. Does he have the knockout on Baby Volcanion through the Fighting Fury Belt? Yeah, he does. So Volcanion not, Vo yeah. Baby Volcanion has 170 HP. He's got 180 right now. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, Sam, I don't see a way Brian can come back. The Parallel City is just incredibly strong in this position. Um, Sam even denies the Sylvian knockout. Mm -hmm. So Sam playing incredibly, incredibly safe. Um, and, you know, Sam, he was he was kind of nervous about this matchup going into this, uh, this series. Actually was out there hanging out with some of his friends, and um, he came over after his match. He said, I'm playing Ryan Sablehouse. What do I do against Ooh. this list? Yeah, and uh, it just said you got to do the same thing. Yeah. Now, Sam just grabbed two prize cards from a knockout on the Baby Volcanion. So yes. he made that mistake. Um, oh. We see Ryan <gasps> saying it's not a big issue. Um, the judge shows a card to Ryan, so uh -huh. he has the same information as Sam. No rearrangement of the prize cards. And, yeah, Sam got way too excited about that his, is... his position. And so That's unusual. Yeah. That's, although, you know what, Sam, he does kind of have a tendency to make mistakes when he plays quickly yeah. um, and I think because he's so far ahead right now you're absolutely right getting a little bit excited um, yeah. making some of those small mistakes you really need to even though you're in such a great position anything can happen yeah. right Ryan can still come back from this there's got to be even if it's you know a point zero zero one percent chance there is a chance and you don't want to mess anything up in the meantime to make that chance higher for Ryan so Sam going to want to just take a breath here, I think. Really, yeah. uh, chill out. You're in a great spot. You're looking good. You've got a Guardian on the bench, a Guardian in the active, Octillery for a Bissell hand. But uh, no reason to play so fast. Yeah, definitely. Um, I believe like one of the traits of the best players in this game is thinking ahead, right? Oh, Trying yeah. to make sure that you have all the responses to what your opponent might try to do during their turn and the following two or three or even four turns. So sometimes when you're thinking so far ahead, you... You get ahead of yourself, and mm -hmm. you do things that you're not supposed to do just yet. And yeah. so Sam probably, in his mind, uh, think about a knockout on the Volcano EX, which is the only big threat, and that might have led to the two mm -hmm. prices, but it's really no big deal. Um, thankfully, it's easily fixed. Yeah. It's not like the Tapu Lele play yeah. from... It's not like they both shuffled City. their decks into yeah, their hands, exactly. and now everything is really complicated. Yeah. Now we see an Elixir, which I don't... I didn't notice if it hit or not. We see a Fighting Fury Belt, and we see Ryan is going to go after the Octillery. So okay, smart. Yeah. Um, Ryan knows that if he's going to make a comic here, he needs to take knockouts with non-GX attackers, and he has, to he has to try to make it so that Sam will whiff um, mm -hmm. an attack or will whiff the necessary energy to knock out the Fighting Fury Belt at Volcanion EX, which is Ryan's only out. And after the Baby Volcanion goes down, 
Ryan will have three Volcanian EXs in play, which with triple steam up and their 140 damage, uh, their 140 base damage, yeah. that's perfect maths to get a one hit KO on Gardevoir. So there's a there's a very small chance of Ryan making a comeback you were talking about, but it's real. It's, it's there. It's possible. And Sam takes needs to take a breather, as you were saying, mm -hmm. and make sure he uh, he plans accordingly. Yeah, Ryan can absolutely. Uh, get that third Volcanion through many different means. He's going to need three energy then to steam up and get the knockout. Um, and he's going to need two of those knockouts. So it's it's tough, but it is absolutely possible. Looks like Sam is considering the end here. He is uh, behind on prizes just a little bit, so it'll benefit him more than it benefits Ryan. But Ryan does have that uh, Aranguru on the bench still. And see, this is where Sam might have gotten way ahead of himself. Um, he's one energy short on getting the knockout through the Fighting Fury belt. And so um, he attached both energy to the benched Gardevoir. So he spread the energy around, trying to play around uh, a knockout. But by not holding one energy in his hand, he actually missed the knockout this turn. And he's only going to get one prize for that. Um, he does find energy, but now without Octillery, he might struggle to find Gusmas. Um, even though he does have Flayla in his hand, we could see another end from Ryan. So. Yeah, um, a few small, maybe getting ahead of himself mistakes mm -hmm. from Sam. If he had held one energy, he would have secured a knockout. Uh, but yeah, now we see the knockout on Baby Bulk, and how will Ryan respond here? It is so unfortunate that he, uh, Ryan, got rid of that field blower, like turn one of this game. If he could have knocked that Parallel City out of here, Sam is only playing one Parallel City. So Ryan only needs the one field blower. Uh, but he needs the field blower, <laughs> and he's just really been feeling the effects of, of discarding that ever since. Yeah, if Ryan wasn't dealing with this Prowl City right now, I'm pretty sure we would be seeing a, a much different game for mm -hmm. sure. Now, there's a Tordinator which finally decides to show up. <coughs> Ryan trying to... or something happening mm -hmm. with the steam ups perhaps. Um... Oh, apparently Ryan drew uh, <laughs> one less card from from N. He only drew two, and then oh, yeah. And so okay. Sam very kindly pointing Let's out that him Ryan's take not his drawing. additional draw. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sam, he's a phenomenal player. You know, yeah. you, you don't need to take those. You don't need your opponent to draw one less card for you to win this match. Yeah, is what I'm trying to get at. You want it to be fair, right? You want to earn that win. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, Sam's a really uh, high quality player. And I'm I'm very happy I can call him my friend and yeah he's yeah. incredible at Pokemon. You guys were playing uh, pretty much the same list, right? Except you, yeah. you said you had the two uh, Acerola, uh, and you were two very Bridget, very yeah. er oh the two Bridget, right, yeah. right. Except you were very close to making it yeah. to the top eight as well. So that means your list must be pretty good, Pablo. Yeah, yeah, uh, we're pretty proud of it. Um, Mike Fouché also also helped us. Mm -hmm. He's also our friend. Yeah, very smart guy. And, yeah, had him on for a couple of series earlier yeah, yeah. today. Yeah, he's he's really good, and we all work together on lists and stuff. And and I mean, Sam is the one having the most success so far. Mm -hmm. But there's there's so much cooperation in Pokemon. It, yeah, it's awesome. It, it's very unusual for other card games, mm -hmm. um, but I think it it must have something <coughs> to do with the fact that you do need to play uh, with another person physically, and it just seems like the teams all running the same identical list is it's unheard of. Yeah. Um, in other spheres, but here it seems to be working so well for um, all of the players, you know, the, the Volcanian players specifically, yeah. and um, you guys as well with your Gardevoir list. It's very cool. Yeah. And now, Ryan through Parallel, through Smart Plays, he's down to one prize card, so... He's getting it done. Yeah. Now, Sam, now fully committing the energy he's going to end, but uh, Ryan thankfully has Guru, but I don't think Sam will bench anything else besides the Gardevoir, so... Mm -hmm. Ryan will really need to do something special here if he's going to take that last knockout. All Sam needs to do is limit Ryan's card draw, <coughs> keep him from having the additional fire energy to steam up or commit to that Turtonator, uh, and Sam should be able to get the rest of his prizes with these Gardevoir. And we know he has uh, Acerolas to pick up, or he has a single Acerola to pick up Gardevoir, um, if he ever wants it. Didn't actually see if he discarded it. He picked it up at one point with uh, Tapu Lele that he got from the Ultra Ball, um, but uh, did not follow exactly what happened to that hand. So uh, my point being, Sam has plays to wa uh, ways to play defensively here yeah. and just uh, get his own prizes while preventing Ryan from taking his final one. 
Now, Brian has a very specific win condition. Well, one of them is finding the Enhance Hammer to try okay. and prevent Turdinator from getting knocked out. Um, if Ryan is able to find another um, Volcanion EX and is able to power up um, Turtonator with a Fighting Fury belt and 3 energy and he gets 2 fire energy for steam up, mm -hmm. then he gets a one shot in Cardboard. But that's that's a, a lot of cards other than N2-1. I mean, Oranguru yeah. helps, but it I don't think it's... it helps that much. Um, the energy definitely helps. And he's going to instruct for three. And he also removed, uh, with the end, he removed Sam's Ultra Ball, which could have gone into Tapu Lele to find mm -hmm. the game-winning Guzma, potentially. Yeah. So, yeah, Ryan making all the right moves to make a comeback here. And he's as close as he'll ever get in this match. So, yeah, he decides to pass. Let's hope for his sake that he finds something. What does Sam have? A fairy energy? A field blower, I think. Uh, I mean, Such he has the knockout on Oranguru mm -hmm. right now. Ryan needs three fire energy, a Volcanion EX, and a Fighting Fury belt. Five cards, and he has three cards in his hand. I don't think he can ever have five cards at the same time. <laughs> um, but you can steam up and then, of course, use uh, Oranguru to draw and hope that you pick up the additional cards. It might be his only out here. Yeah, though Oranguru is probably getting knocked out this turn, so... Mm -hmm. He won't have access to instruct. There's the DCE. Yep. That's more enough energy to knock out whatever Ryan has in play. So there's a knockout. Okay. And will Ryan find all the cards he needs this turn? One prize remaining for both of these guys. Ryan finally has some room on the bench. Oh, he has Sycamore. So there's one steam up. Oh. There's two fire energy. So he's found two of the five cards he needs. Okay, will so he, he get them? He's at 190 damage this turn. He needs a Fighting Fury Belt, a Volcanion, and another Fire Energy. Can he hit it? There's he the Volcanion. He got both Volcanions <gasps> and he double That's teams it. up for a game. He wow. got it. What? Oh, my goodness. What, what a an game ending. from Ryan. That Sycamore was perfect. He got exactly <laughs> what he needed. And Ryan is going to tie up this series. Wow. What a nail biter. Oh, my what goodness. A match. I, I didn't see that coming. I did not, not see that coming. Not even a I little have, bit. I would have put money on Sam I winning thought it, that match. I thought it was Done. I mean, that Parallel wow. City being down the entire game. Whew. Ryan just made this interesting. Yeah, Ryan, I'm really impressed wow. by, by all the moves Ryan pulled. And I think the key moment here was um, not only the, the field blower discard in the early game, yep. but the Octillery knockout. The Octillery knockout was You're exactly absolutely right. what made Sam with those turns. Mm -hmm. That, and if Sam had held back one energy... Uh, when he double attached to the bench card war, if he had held one, he would have knocked out the Volcanion before the Volcanion knocked out the Octillery. Yep. Yeah, so... Maybe a little bit of some resource management issues there for Sam, just a bit. Um, but even still, Ryan, the turn that he guzmed out the Octillery, he had nothing else that he could possibly <laughs> do. It was a very weak hand, something like three Guzma, two Volcanion, and a choice ban. Like, his options were very, very limited. But he made the most of even that turn, getting rid of the one consistent draw engine in Sam's deck that is not uh, a supporter card. So very, very well played by Ryan Sablehouse. And we're going to game three. We got 29 minutes to do it. You know what? I'm really happy we get to see a game three for this these is, two this players is awesome. because that that was that was a match. That was one of the best matches I think I've <laughs> I've ever seen. And and you can see how. Not only is Ryan's list good, um, which is the same as Igor, who yes. was for seed, but um, it's also the player, right? Because it, like lists are so publicly available today mm -hmm. that anyone can see Ryan's list. But it's like making all the micro decisions within the game that mm -hmm. that make a huge difference with with how well you do. Yeah, you can net deck anyone's list. Yeah, exactly. But you can't take the pilot yeah. and, and turn yourself... You can't turn yourself into Ryan Sablehouse. You can't turn yourself yeah. into Igor Costa. Uh, and there's uh, plays that Ryan and Igor make that only come from years of experience. Yeah. So many games played, so many games tested with this deck. A beautiful understanding of exactly what they need to accomplish, even in... Uh, matchups where they may not have the advantage, matchups where they look like they're so far behind and still finding that way to come back 
from behind. So Ryan is going to start two Volcanion EX this game, and Sam gets the natural Bridget yeah. again. This guy is just a master. The one natural. Wow. Yeah, I guess why do you need to why play two, need two when you when only? You just yeah, the when one, you always Pablo. throw it. Yeah. That was your problem. That was my mistake. <laughs> that was my mistake for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. He chooses to play the Bridget first before attaching to EV because he wants to make sure that both Sylvian aren't priced. It's like, yeah. I think sequen right sequencing in Pokemon is very important. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it's what differentiates many times uh, the best players from from uh, an average player who might have immediately attached to EV because, yeah, yeah. you get the energy evolution, you get to search uh -huh. out for Sylvian, but if Sylvians are priced, then you don't want to, to go for the Sylvian because it's, it's, it's a, a very waste. It's a very small thing, but it's maximizing the benefit from every resource, even if it's just yeah. a basic fairy energy on the first turn of the game. It matters, especially <coughs> when you're playing against an opponent who is as phenomenal as Ryan Sablehouse is at piloting Volcanion EX. But Sam does see the Sylveon in the deck, so he will attach the Fairy and go for the Energy Evolution. Picks up three routes for the bench off of the Bridget. Yeah, so interesting to note, he didn't go for Remory. So I see Octillery, and I'm not going to say I don't see Remory because I was very wrong the previous game. However, um, yeah, I mean... There's a Sylveon, and Sam won't be able to Magical Ribbon this turn he, because he did choose to go first. Uh, but Ryan, once again, he needs to find that Baby Volk to hopefully damage the Sylveon. And if he does, he, he would be in a very good position. Yeah, so Sam just prepping for, for the next turn. And probably going to pass here. Yep, he has a uh, rare candy and DC, so his next magical ribbon will be pretty good. Mm -hmm. Ryan does find the Bay Volcanion and immediately plays a Guzma in order to probably get a knockout here. There's yeah, does he have the steam up? I don't think he does. Oh, may have to take the, the two turn on this route. Yeah, and there we see the, the power here for 30. That's not too bad, but um, it does force Sam into an awkward position where he doesn't have an Ultra Ball mm -hmm. uh, to find a Gardevoir, so he could attach the DC to retreat. He has the Gus Mat to retreat just like Ryan did, and we might see that, I guess, um, in order for Sam to Magical Ribbon, and I think Ryan's hand is, is not great. <laughs> Sam being <laughs> that funny one? there. Nope, and that one. Yeah, choosing, <laughs> making sure he chooses which Volcanian EX. Because Gotta stay in control. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I Gotta guess assert it, dominance. And you know what? I guess that's important. It seems like silly, but yeah. it's important because it's something you get used to, right? Mm -hmm. it's like you know that you need to pick your opponent's target. Yeah, exactly. For so you don't take shortcuts, yeah. which maybe later on in in the match, if you're or if you get too comfortable and mm -hmm. you take a shortcut, there might be a misunderstanding on which Volcanian Sam chose and yeah. which one Ryan promoted and whatnot. You need to so be I guess I mean it seems be very silly, clear. but. It doesn't hurt to be very, very clear. Yeah, yeah. not at all. Uh, yeah. <sighs> but like you were saying, the DCE set up on that Ralts on the bench, and now Magical Ribbon will uh, get Sam almost exactly what he needs to set up a couple of Gardevoir. He has a rare candy, so he could have easily gone for another rare candy and two Gardevoir to, to get that set up. Or maybe even Kalate, because I'm going to assume, yeah, there's a Kalate, so I'm pretty sure... Sam doesn't have Remory in his deck. Mm -hmm. Now I will I will assure you <laughs> of that. <laughs> He's going to need Premonition um, to uh, f consistently find the draw supporters if he doesn't have access to Abyssal Hand. Although, in both of the games before, he really didn't have access to it yeah. either. <laughs> uh, in the first one, because Octillery was prized, and in the second, because Ryan guzmud it up and got the knockout very easily. Yeah. Now, Ryan just played a Sycamore, and guess what he discarded? the field blower so once again poor ryan very unlucky to draw the single field blower um he's not going to be able to deal with parallel if it's in sam's deck and if sam chooses to to search for it or eventually finds it so that might be a problem for ryan although he dealt with it very very well last time around he might might have an issue dealing with that once again and we also see another Ultra Ball um, by Ryan and discarding a second Guzma. So that means Ryan only has two Guzma left for this match, which could come into play when trying to mm -hmm. get that last knockout on maybe something not as big as a Gardevoir GX. Yeah. Uh, it's very relevant. 
Ryan immediately goes for Oranguru though, so Oranguru was huge. Oranguru was the MVP. <laughs> like, it didn't take any knockouts, but Oranguru found uh -huh. the cards. Ryan yeah, it, it got Ryan that Sycamore, which got Ryan uh, the other Volcanians, the steam ups, and uh, finally the knockout with that Turtonator. <coughs> now, no Turtonator yet for Ryan. Um, to see a Max Elixir hit. Now, does he have a way to switch out that Volcanian EX? That's no. what I'm really wondering. Second Max Elixir, will he get it? He does. Yep. Very rare that they whiff with the Max Elixir, especially running 15 fire yeah. energy, but it happens. It does happen, yeah. yeah it sucks does when it happen. happens. It really sucks when it happens early on, you know, because yeah. when your deck is still filled with so much energy. Later on in the later on in the match, if you never found that um, Max Elixir, then mm -hmm. yeah, like odds get reduced every time. However, in the early game, it's really, really unfortunate if you don't hit them with so many energy. Yep. And it looks like Ryan did not get a way to switch out here. So, or maybe he's, he, I, he just used Sycamore, so he can't Cosma this turn. Um, yep, he goes for a Sycamore, preparing for next turn, um, hoping to hit his one switch or either of his float stones. And yeah, looks like Ryan will just pass the turn to to Sam here. All right, so Sam's still left with three routes on the bench, but he has looks to be a couple of rare candies. Yep. And there's a Glade as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm right. very jealous of Sam. Every time I use Magical Ribbon, all my opponents would not let me keep the cards. <laughs> and, and you get end every time. You run yeah. to Bridget and you never start any of them. Yeah, and then Sam... Oh, teach just, us your ways, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> there must be a reason he keeps top eighting and uh, doing so well at all of these large tournaments because he's... I mean, not only is he playing incredibly well, he just he's drawn so well. Yeah, yeah. Now, but to be fair, Ryan has two most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Sam did play an in, even though Ryan only had three cards in his hand. And many players would maybe consider holding back the end. But here, Sam knows that if he sets up, if he gets ahead of, of Ryan, um, he's in the, in the driver position. He will have the advantage. So he doesn't mind giving Ryan extra cards as long as he's able to get the energy in play. As long as he's able to magical ribbon for what he needs, he's more concerned on what he needs than mm -hmm. what Ryan might actually bring into play. And yeah, Ryan, he has a strong board, uh, definitely stronger than than the previous match. Uh, but once again, Volcanians are a lot more fragile than than Turtonator is in this match. So with no Turtonator inside, Sam must be feeling really comfortable here. And there's a reason you play 15 fire energy because you need to, uh, in some turns, discard three of it just to be able to get the knockout onto the Gardevoir. And that can be hard to come <coughs> by if Sam is able to limit Ryan's draw. But since Ryan hasn't taken any prizes yet, we're still a ways away from that. Now, Ryan does go ahead once again and decides to draw. Now, it'll be interesting if he decides to, to hold on. <laughs> Uh, and on playing anything or if he's just gonna go ahead with his turn both players must be very aware about the time right now mm -hmm. um, yeah. Sam is wearing a watch I don't think Ryan is um, but it's been a while since since they started playing it is game three so Ryan probably wants to play um, fast so that he has enough time to to make to maybe make a comeback like he did the, yeah. the previous game um, Sam is I'm sure very conscious of time, and, and Ryan is you know, also an incredibly experienced player. I'm sure these guys have a good grasp on where they are at in this match. Um, maybe not down to the second how much time is remaining, yeah. but they've been here before. They, they know what's going on. Now, Sam, immediately off of this Magical Ribbon, he went for the Parallel CD. So Ryan, next turn, unless he finds an end here, He's once again going to struggle, although he dealt with it pretty well last yeah. turn, um, last game around. So there's the Turtonator. Yep. And MVP it, last game. Yeah. Now he's got five spots on his bench. So imagine the possibilities. <laughs> yeah, if Ryan can pull off uh, moves like the, like the ones we saw in the previous game with only three bench Pokemon, <laughs> five is such a five. luxury for him. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's like bench Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Now, he played a Max Elixir before benching the Turtonator. Um, 
that's very peculiar. I don't, I mean, Does maybe... he want full energy onto the Volcanion EX? Perhaps, but I would imagine mm. Turtonator is a bigger priority. Now, if Sam limits Ryan's bench once again, it'll be interesting to see what Ryan chooses to discard because he will discard the Tapu Lele for sure. Yeah. However, will he discard the Orang Guru? Will he discard the Volcanion mm. EX? Um, that's that's tough because you want the additional steam ups. Yeah. You want Baby Volcanion to be able to, to power, power up, up your Volcanion EX, but that Orin Guru also saved you last game yeah. by uh, <laughs> getting you that Sycamore, which then won Ryan the game. So I don't know if we get to that point, it's going to be tough to see exactly what that second uh, bench discard will end up being. Yep. Now we see a second steam up, and we see Orin Guru and Orin Guru's instruct, and they try and find a way to switch out. That's what we don't know here. You see the energy and... Does he have... Oh, he finds oh, an he's end. Got the so end. he gets to deny the parallel CD, at least for, for a turn before Sam goes after it. Mm -hmm. And Ryan really desperate to find either a switch or a, um, or a float stone to pressure that Sylvian. Um, that Sylvian, even though um, Ryan can end, as we are seeing right now, mm -hmm. Sam can just infinitely... Uh, magical ribbon as long as Ryan is just not damaging the pull the three of anything that he wants every single turn and Ryan's only playing two floatstone and one switch yep. there's the enhanced hammer that's going to be some good disruption now Sam uh, will need to commit even more energy onto the guardy yeah but no way to switch for Ryan so really struggling and he passes a turn here that's unfortunate Another rare candy for Sam means he might get a second Gardevoir GX into play. So Looks like once he again, might have an Ultra Ball on the left side of his hand as well. Yeah, and he has double Sycamore. He has Floatstone, so he can even go aggressive with Gardevoir. But I really expect to see another Magical Ribbon for that mm -hmm. Pearl CD to try and and get it into play. He played last game uh, rather defensively. Yeah, I'd say holding back with the Gardevoir until he was sure that he was going to get. Uh, the one hit uh, KO with all of the energy built up, Magical Ribbon like three times. Yeah. So if you have that time, if Ryan is giving Sam that time, Sam's just going to take it. Yeah, definitely. And wow, actually, Sam is going to discard the rare candy, so not going to to get another guard of war. He actually opts to go for a Curlia. So I'm very interested into the logic behind that. I, I mean, I guess the other cards in his hand are mm -hmm. so. Um, useful that he can't afford um, to discard them and go after the Gardevoir, so that's why he gets rid of the Rikanian, I guess. With one Gardevoir in play, you can feel pretty confident that yeah. off of the Sycamore, you will probably did we, hit. Did we see the third Gardevoir in the deck? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, not that's sure if the third, but the second, second definitely. definitely. Yeah. Now, Oranguru makes an... I mean, uh, Octillery makes an appearance, but no Remoraid in sight. We do see Sam hit at DCE, but that's not enough to take a knockout on the Volcanion. He's actually missing one energy. Um, if he had access to another Gardevoir GX and he had another fairy in his hand, he would actually be able to take a knockout. And yep, yeah, it's a Gardevoir GX that's missing. So choosing Close. not to go for the for the Gardevoir um, might have hurt what, him. What but else could he have gotten rid of here? Mm. The Lele is valuable. The Choice Band will help you with the knockouts. Yeah, and we're going to see another Magical Ruin. And definitely going to grab the Parallel CD. A Gardevoir, yep. And maybe another Energy, maybe a Guzma to a knock out the threat. Yeah, field Blower is not super relevant right now. Only one Fighting Fury Belt in play. Could yeah. go for another Curlia even, just to... Or, or the routes. a supporter as well, because Sam's hand has an Ace Rolla, but he does... Oh, he has lately. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no need to go for a supporter. And yeah, we did get to see, so it's Gardevoir, Parallel, and a Mystery card. Now, does Ryan have the N? Can he deny Sam from those three cards of choice yet again? Can he delay the Parallel City even mm -hmm. further? And can Ryan get an attack in? Because That's <laughs> that important Volcanion too. EX has been sitting up there for a very long time. Oh, he top decks the switch. There we okay, go. Okay, there you go. So, yeah, I'm really interested to see what Ryan is going to to discard off of the off of the parallel. I'm very, very curious. 
Now we're gonna see a Max Elixir. Probably on to the Turtinator. Um, it does hit. Yep. Oh, no. To the Volcanion. So Kay. very smartly spreading all the energy around. Don't want to commit too much to any one place. Yep. Uh, you run the risk of uh, Sam using Guzma and getting the kill with the Gardevoir then if he's got a DCE and can Secret Spring for additional energy from hand. Yep. Now... Ran used Lily, and he found us his second Enhanced Hammer. However, Sam very smartly decided to attach two Fairy Energy yeah. um, the previous turn instead of the DC he's holding in his hand. Just and looks like a power heater to me for 30. Yep. Ryan going to grab two more energy. Now, he's forced to choose targets for the energy, so he cannot choose not to attach energy mm -hmm. uh, to try to maybe prevent a knockout from Cardivore, so that's like... It's not something bad about Volcanion, but it's something that can unintentionally hurt you. Can he opt to not attach? Or no. because the wording is so direct, he is forced to yeah. attach yeah, so two energy if he has it. Yeah, exactly. If he has just one, he has to attach one. Mm -hmm. If he has two, he has to attach both. Okay. He cannot choose to only attach one or zero. So, yeah, um, that could actually be relevant at some point in the game. There's yeah. that Guzma. Yep. So, Sam probably going after the... Three energy Volcanion, I would imagine. Um, pretty sure Ryan has the response knockout on with Turtinator. So, oh no, he oh, goes he's going after, after Lele. Lele. Oh, but because he's going to parallel CD. Gotcha. Here. He doesn't want that Lele being taken off the board. This is brilliant from yeah. Sam, forcing Ryan to pick three Pokemon that he has set up. Uh, two Pokemon, excuse me, to get them off of the board. So now he doesn't have access to Oranguru for the draw. He doesn't have access to Baby Volcanion for the fire energy from the discard. Granted, he still has three fully prepared attackers on the bench. <laughs> so he's still feeling okay. But this was very nice from Sam. Yeah, definitely. And, whoa, we're going to see a plea GX attack here. So wow. um, Sam, unless he was purposely trying to get rid of an energy from the Kirlia, I mm -hmm. believe made a small mistake there. He could have first retreated the Sylveon to the bench, then played the Guzma. So he would mm -hmm. we, he would have saved an energy. So a small mistake by Sam. Um, no reason to not want more energy in play. Um, I mean, he's got a super rod in deck. Maybe if he's running really low, he wants to take some from discard, put them back into the deck, but that's very fringe. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's very fringe. I think um, his deck is still at least 20-ish cards. Yeah. And yeah, I mean... A couple DCEs left. He's, he's not uh, hurting for energy quite yet. Yep. And now Ryan's hand with Oof. over almost 15 cards, I would imagine, or so. We um, actually saw one beautiful... It may have been Sam, actually, in the first round yesterday. Plead, uh, Parallel City... Plea GX N. Oof. It was a beautiful setup over two turns. Force all those cards back into the deck for his opponent, and it worked out perfectly. Can he do it again and uh, force Ryan to have to search out all of this fire energy again? That would be huge. Yeah, and Ryan not choosing to bench Vival Canyon, even though he did draw one. So he's going to rely on manual attachments in order to take knockouts, or he could use Nitro Tank GX as well. See a double steam up uh, by Ryan, so discarding a lot of energy. And Ryan has an N, but does he really want to shovel all those energy? Yep, I guess he does. Um, doesn't okay. get rid of the DC from Sylvian either, so he wants to save that Enhanced Hammer for a powered up um, Gardevoir to maybe make Sam miss a few knockouts or a knockout. And both players going to draw six cards, I believe, so it's been a very, a very slow game. Oh, no, Sam drawing five, sorry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's been a very slow game, and time might actually come into play now. There's under <laughs> nine minutes left. Man, I will always learn to not call anything because yeah. <laughs> I said at the beginning, oh, there's plenty of time. They added, what, like 20 minutes to the timer. We should be able to get through three games. Nah. I mean, these, these guys are making very intelligent plays, um, taking all the time that they can to think about what is my opponent going to be doing next turn, the turn after that? How should I respond? What should I discard with Ultra Ball? So many factors going through their minds right now, and that, that takes time. Yeah. Now, I can't emphasize enough how much um, Sam wants to stay ahead in this match just because 
as of time. Um, yeah. The official. Well, I guess this is game three. So, if I'm I'm actually not sure if the game if Sam has drawn four prizes, I believe the game does count, and therefore I believe Sam so. would be the winner. But if Sam hasn't drawn four prizes or Ryan hasn't drawn four prizes, uh, they keep playing until the next prize is drawn. Okay. There's no reset for sudden death. I'm, I think that's how it works. Yes, uh, that four prizes does not take effect in Swiss, but in cut, I believe you are correct. Yeah. Yes. Now we do see Sam use premonition. So <laughs> artillery just showing up Poor everywhere, guy. but that's probably going to be the last card. Oh, no. Okay, so it's CV and then artillery. And at the top is a Guzma. So Sam's top deck is guaranteed to be a Guzma. Now, we see a um, fairy wind for 110, so finally some aggression from from Sam. Uh, we see a fire energy, and we see an end by Ryan. So Ryan probably wanting to find a max elixir, but I'm pretty sure he's used at least three of them. So is he going to choose to use Nitro Tank GX? Because he's already attached for a turn. So he can't really threaten mm -hmm. that Sylvian. The Nitro Tank setup, though. Uh, yeah, uh, he's going to bring in Turtonator. He go. is. Okay, yep. so that's going to be five energy any way he wants it onto his Pokemon. And this is the setup that Ryan needed. He has to take a turn to accomplish it, uh, but then he's going to have two fully powered up attackers ready to go. So Sam just used uh, Field Blower. So. If Sam wants to knock out the Turgenator, he's going to have to deal 240 damage, which is 8 total um, energy between energy and choice band. So I think Ryan could maybe decide to attach an energy to the Turgenator. He powers up a Volcanion EX, or both Volcanion EXs, and yep, he does go for the energy on Turgenator. So can Sam pull of a knockout? Oh, he topped like an, an Ultra, not a Guzman, my bad. <laughs> okay. Um, Sam... <laughs> Gonna check Ryan's discard pile. Probably checking for how many energy are available because if Ryan has the turn air powered up but he doesn't have the two energy for steam up, then it doesn't really matter. And Sam could take a knockout on a Volcanion EX right now with the Kuzma he's holding, so that's another um, factor to consider. But wow. Can he just retreat the Sylveon and get the knockout on the Turtonator for 230? Uh, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, yep. 8, 8, 16, 24. Yep, that yep. would be the knockout on the Turtonator in the active. And then Ryan would need... Ooh, he would need a lot to be able to take out that Gardevoir <laughs> yeah. in Revenge, yeah. And that Fighting Veer built on Turtonator um, is also needed for Volcanion. So even if he finds another Volcanion... Um, triple steam up plus 130 that's 220 damage that's 10 short so once again can Ryan find a response here we see an enhanced hammer top deck I believe these guys are wasting no time yeah and what's the card that Ryan discards there uh, looks Wavy like Volcanion. a Volcanion yeah but what's the other card I mm, rescue don't stretcher know. does he uh, have one no, no he doesn't no. play rescue stretcher Mm, hard uh, we to see tell. The it was red. Steam up. Yeah, double steam up. We see Sycamore. Um, we're going to see triple steam up. That's 220 damage, if I'm not mistaken. So, so does he have 10 damage short? That Fighting Fury Belt would be enough. I don't think he has it. Nope. He just deals 220 damage. So, so powerful, but two, 10 damage short 10 of actually knocking short. out this guard war. So close. Yep. But so far, still for Ryan. 10 damage might be the difference between winning and losing some games in Pokemon. That, that, that is... I mean, it's the way of the game. Yeah. But you made it to top 8 cut. That's heartbreaking, yep. And there's there's Ryan uh, accepting defeat. Uh, three minutes on the clock, but Sam was going to go down to one prize. And yeah, pretty pretty incredible match, honestly. Pretty incredible match. That and third game was, was much more decisive yeah. than either of the previous games. But, but that second one, I cannot emphasize enough how well Ryan Sablehouse played that second game. That second it game. was yeah. 
beautiful that he managed to come back uh, and win that, though he was limited to just three Pokemon on his bench the entire game. It, it was a phenomenal series, very well played to both of these guys making it into the top eight, but Sam Chen will be moving on to the semifinals. Fantastic job by both of them. That was a great one.